said that Jesus is alive in you. Jesus is alive in me. The reality of what we do is sometimes personified by how we live, how we conduct ourselves, and what we do more than what we say. Because it's so easy to make a professional video or to have a nice, organized, well-coordinated church service. And if you've ever been in one, then praise the Lord, you know how fun it is to listen to your favorite musician or your your dynamic speaker or your you know evangelical pastor that's full of the Holy Spirit or your Pentecostal pastor or whoever it may be. And those things are all nice, you know, they're they're the reality of what we are, you know, when we go to church on Sunday. And sometimes that's nice on the web too, you know, you see some professional videos and you see some not so professional like this one or you see a variety of things that maybe help you to discover that Jesus is interested in you. But you know what? Jesus isn't just interested in where you are when it comes to your life. He's interested in where you live, how you deal with your everyday, day-to-day existence. I mean, we've been doing fall cleaning. We've been cleaning the house, we've been organizing, growing our plants, moving things from outside the porch to inside, been shampooing, carpeting, moving furniture out that I bought at used stores and bringing in furniture that I may have found someplace else, and just doing a variety of things with the Lord that we ask Him, like, Lord, you know, my back hurts, so, you know, God, look at this, man, it was only 99 cents, and now I put it on my chair, and it really helps me out. So thank you, God, for giving me that. For being thankful for little things that may not make sense to some people. But God wants you to share your life with Him. What is in your life where you're living today? Are you cleaning house, so to speak, to get ready for Jesus' return? You see, we're about to shut down Evotional for about 10 days because we're going on vacation and we never get a vacation we don't go on these christian cruises or to some foreign country or whatever we barely have enough money to get by from paycheck to paycheck so we save and scrimp and you know really put it together to to find some finances to to be able to get our broken car parked and rent a car you know for a week as cheap as we can you know and starve but literally just to go someplace to do something that we like to do like I love to dance so really it's pretty simple for me I can go out dancing all the time but for my wife I like to take her away from work and from you know the stresses of the city and she likes to take me away from the ministry so that we can just get out in the woods again you know like I've enjoyed when I was in Oregon or Alaska and she doesn't want to move to Alaska believe me but we're going to close the ministry down and that's why we've been pulling back everything into the house and why we're filming this and not sharing daily light and streams in the desert and my utmost first highest and God calling and all those things because the Lord sometimes his timing is ahead of my timing and when I tried to film those things earlier the camera didn't work <laughs> I went oh no not again Lord what are you doing to me ah! but the reality is is if we accept what God is doing then you find that this was more intimate. This was more real. This was a chance for me to talk to you one-on-one -on -one and say, look, look at my house. Check it out. I like it. I enjoy finding those things that make me happy in being alive with Jesus so that I could walk away from these and if the house burned down, I wouldn't think twice. But when I have them, I thrill over being able to put things in just the right place that I go, ooh, that fits perfect, Lord, that's so right on. Ooh, that's nice, that's so comfortable. Oh, thank you, Lord, for that. And that's what God wants you to do today. He wants you, where you are, as you are, the person you are, to be thankful for what He has brought you to. Because you see, this year, 2011, people are talking about the end of the world. They think that, oh my God, the comet Elenin is going to destroy the world, or the planet Nibiru or Nibiru or Planet X is going to come rushing in, 
and somehow during the Feast of Trumpets, which is going to happen at the end of this month, all of it's going to come to a climax and it's all going to wipe us out. No. <laughs> Sorry. And when it doesn't happen, be thankful. Because God's given you some time. He's given me time. Like when I go on my vacation, I get to go touch base with some people that I care about, that I'm worried about, I'm concerned about, that I get a chance to share Jesus with. And likewise for you, when you find out that it's not the end of the world at the end of the month or 2012, but as you go through these things and the politics get crazy and the world gets crazy and Israel and everything else, don't lose sight of what God in Jesus is trying to do for you. He's trying to get you to rejoice. You're not supposed to run around worried about these things like fires in Texas or wherever they may be. They happen every year. Or solar storms because they come every four years. I think it's four years. And other things that because we have more information now, we get more carried away about the information than the person the information is about. Yes, Jesus is coming. That's cool. Isn't that great? No. It's supposed to be like, yes, it's a joy because you're going to be spared from all these things that are about to happen. And not everyone will be spared. I'm sorry. Yeah, some won't. But the point is, take the day to rejoice in. To rejoice in the people you know. Where your home is. Bring some stranger in and say, hey, make yourself at home. Like we're doing with our neighbor across the way. Take care of the plants. Eat something. Drink something. <laughs> like we have anything to eat or drink. <laughs> Are they in for a surprise? But no, to come over and take care of our plants, you know, and to, you know, relax and see who we are, that we're nobody special. And that's the point of this video right now, is to let you know that when we come back, you know, to sharing, there'll be some changes. That They're still the same emotional, but it may not be that title and may not be the same place on YouTube. But we're bringing to you, for the sake of all of 2012 and starting in 2013, a just a, a marathon dash of excitement and joy over the soon return of Jesus because we know that from 2013 onward, there's no time left, folks. There's no retirement plans. There's no, what are we going to do and how long will it be and will the Lord return because he's coming. And I'm thrilled about it. So if you don't see us for a week or two or ten days, you know, well, ten days, not two weeks then rejoice today. Take this word from the Lord to you, where you are with Jesus, and rejoice in him. And if you don't know Jesus in a personal way like I do or whatever, just acknowledge inside that there's somebody growing and there's something growing. And if you don't think, and if you think that's a little weird, then just think about what a pregnant mother feels like when something's growing inside of her, because that was a type of what Jesus was trying to show happens when we come spiritually born again. We have babies inside, so to speak. That's us, baby spirits, a part of us that's growing and becoming the real person that we are. So I pray that, as you can see, in my house, of course you can't see everything because I'm not going to show you the mess. <laughs> what do you think I am, crazy? My wife would kill me. But be real in who you are. If you make a mistake about the prophecy or you make a mistake in theology, admit it. I'm going to find you. <laughs> you know it. I will find you. I will tell you, no. <laughs> or share, you know, that no, the Bible didn't say that. This is what the Bible says. This is what Scripture says. Maybe Jesus is taking you that way. And everyone knows in this ministry that I say whatever the Lord tells you to do, that you should do. So if God is taking you to some kind of strange little place, well, I guess you're going to go learn because like Joseph, maybe you may experience prison in Egypt for a while, but I don't want to go there. So, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and let Him direct your path. Not just today, but every day. And if He gives you a chance to get away for a little while, to get rid of the cell phones, the computers, the churches, the religions, the everything, just so you can be alone with God and have a quiet time, to have a desert time, to have a peaceful time, then go do it. Don't feel guilty. <laughs> Take a moment to be with Jesus. He loves you. And he wants to spend the time with you. In the meantime, check it out!